Hey guys, Jake here. I'm a licensed aquarium fisherman in Western Australia and this is just a video to show you guys what we get up to when we're doing our dives. This type of video I get asked about a lot. It seems to be something that you guys want to see so if you like it please share it if you can, follow along. It means a lot. So here I find my first coral. This is a trackie, a nice bright red one. Uh, as you've seen, that trackie was actually loose on the floor, so that's pretty standard. That's what those corals do, they're just a free-living coral. They start off on the reef and uh, they get too big eventually and break off and yeah, we often find them upside down. Uh, over here, I'm just going to grab a couple of uh, live rock pieces. This is just going to help me weigh down my basket. Now, interestingly enough, the live rock actually used to be a coral. So all these live rock pieces that we see around us were all once uh, a live coral essentially. Now I think uh, I come across a hammer coral here. Yep, nice big uh, green mother colony. So this size coral uh, isn't really viable for me to take with such a small quota. And it's good to keep these big colonies on the reef. Now I am moving pretty slow here, a bit slower than normal just to uh, make it so the camera isn't too shaky. Uh, another hammer here, you can see the sponge is starting to win the battle. Over here we have a Astrolithia wilsoni. Now it's hard to see but uh, anytime these guys are showing signs of red, uh, we'll take them, especially at this size. Uh, the red's just basically a sign showing that uh, it'll have very good uh, potential when it comes to artificial lighting to colour up. This is one of my favourite dive spots. The reef is uh, just really teeming with life and we always find really nice stuff here. Uh, we come across this huge colony of Alveopora and a uh, nice colony of anemones and a colony of Clarky Clownfish. Uh, if I had an order, I'd probably harvest a few of those, but today we're doing corals, so I'm not really interested. This is a Favia amicorum. Under lights, this would be a really nice crimson pink colour. Yeah, there might be some uh, scientists out there that can help us identify these uh, orange, what we thought were once a coral, uh, type of SPS, uh, recently. Uh, a friend has suggested that maybe it's a type of worm that uh, builds a tube-like structure. Um, many worms, I should say, which is sort of gives it the colour. But yeah, very interesting. Not quite sure what it is. Over here we have another nice red trackie. And uh, I'll just show you how easily they come off the reef. So they just break off, they become free living. Yeah, pretty pretty tough coral. Even uh, if they're found upside down, you know, after a couple of weeks, you can still upright them and uh, usually they'll, they'll still be alive. So, yeah, pretty tough coral. You just see all the beautiful fans and soft corals that are around. It's uh, some pretty specky ground here. Over here we've got a nice colony of Daisy. It's an Australian iconic but uh, very underrated. It looks stunning in an aquarium. And another nice wall hammer over here. Uh, if you look closely there's uh, some dancing anemone shrimp on it. Top right hand corner of a, the coral I think you can see one dancing and pretty cool to see. Not the right colours for us to take. Now, with many uh, corals and uh, when they spawn, the colour of the mother colony generally doesn't really matter when it comes to what the colour of the offspring is going to be. Uh, for instance, brown hammers can produce ultra-orange hammers uh, and vice versa. It really depends on uh, where the coral babies land. The depth of the water generally will determine the colour of the, uh, the hammer, uh, but there's other other factors like uh, turbidity of the water that plays a big part. 
what we really need to be doing is uh, more research on all of these factors, especially in coral growth rates in the wild. There's just not enough research out there and, and it's been left up to us, but that's why I'm trying to take all this on board. We have a nice little toadstool down here, nice little bright green polyp one, and even a uh, peltata cup coral just above it. Now this is a big uh, turban area that's uh, died. You can see these feather stars that are using it. I think over here we find a nice uh, Wilson eye. So again, it's uh, got a nice little bit of red in it. Uh, it does have a little dead spot on there, but uh, these corals are pretty tough and uh, we can heal that fully in captivity. We use a chisel underneath the coral and these guys pop up pretty easy. You see that dead spot in the middle there. Add a nice little hammer coral to finish the dive off. So if you like this vid guys, let us know. All your support's greatly appreciated. We'll speak to you soon.